how did we all know what time to be here tonight? Anybody have any guesses or? Yes, watches, clocks. Clocks are everywhere. We have them on our walls, wrists, cell phones. I've always been interested in clocks. Uh, the first clock I remember was one that my grandmother had in her kitchen. It was a typical type of clock that you see in every classroom, essentially. It's a big, round, white clock with black numbers. And we, uh, the second clock that I remember was a German cuckoo clock. My dad was in the army. I was born in Germany. We then came to, back to the U.S. and then went back to Germany when I was in kindergarten. The family, we lived in a military uh, type of complex for families, and the family that lived across from us had a cuckoo clock that they had on their wall. And I loved going to their apartment because I could sit there and watch the clock and it had a pendulum that swung back and forth. And it was decorated like a little house uh, with a cuckoo that would come out and cuckoo. And it was just so different from what I remember either at my grandmother's house or school. And it, it was, I was fascinated by it. Uh, growing up, I was the type of kid that would take things apart and, you know, all the time, could not necessarily put them back together. How many people can relate? So by the time I got into high school, I got much better. I, my friends actually called me MacGyver because I carried a Swiss Army knife around and I could fix things for them. Uh, also in high school, I had a part-time job and I worked for about a month to save money so that I could buy a Movado Museum classic watch which is a watch with a face that only has a single gold dot uh, at the 12 hour. I loved the, the simplicity. Uh, it had no numbers. At first, you know, yes, it was a little dif difficult to tell time, but eventually, you know, just by, it, it wasn't accurate. So <laughs> one thing, but, but it, was, it was close enough for me, but I loved the watch. Uh, then college, I, I initially started biology, eventually changed to physics because I loved doing homework. I love doing the problems. I love the problem-solving part of it. So with physics, I learned about mechanics, uh, gear ratios, uh, pendulums, springs, and eventually how they work or how they allow a clock to tell time with, with, with pendulum and the gear ratios. Uh, also, I learned about and learned to appreciate the mechanics and uh, the struggle that people went into uh, in the 1700s to be able to tell time accurately, uh, especially at sea. So uh, clocks were used or could be used to tell the longitude, which would then help sailors know when they were approaching land and would help them to keep from running aground. Um, so after college, I had a basic regular wall clock. I, it stopped running, so I needed to change the battery. I took it down from the wall. I looked at the back and saw that essentially it's a mechanism, or all clocks, basic clocks, or you've got a mechanism and then you've got a face. Uh, on the mechanism, you've got two shafts that poke through the face, which the hands attach to. As these two shafts turn, uh, it turns the hands and it, it shows time. So I thought it would be cool if instead of the hands moving, it the face moved. So I worked on this clock for about a week. Um, and eventually got it working, but I wasn't happy with it. At the time, I didn't know why, or I didn't know what I wanted. I just wanted something different. And I put it away and essentially forgot about clocks for a couple of years. I got into painting. I you know, learned about Impressionism, Van Gogh, and I really liked Van Gogh because of the bright colors he used, the bright brush strokes, and his paintings, uh, and I, you can probably imagine Starry Night, where the sky has a type of rhythm and a flow to it. Uh, I really like that, and uh, that was my passion. I forgot about clocks. And then a couple years later, uh, all of a sudden one day, I, the movement for a type of clock with hands that moved up and down, kind of like this, came to me, and I, started to work on this clock, and eventually what I wound up building, if you can think of a ruler, which is numbered from one to 12, with hands, an hour hand and a minute hand that move up along the numbers and then into the body. And you know, as the hour hand is about to hit 12 appear, 
there's another one that's about to come up, so it circulates around kind of like this. So I worked on that clock for four years. I would go to Cuckoo Clock repair stores here in Dallas. I think there were maybe four or five that I went to, but there was only one store that would sell clock, used clock parts to me. Everybody else thought I was crazy. They're like, why do you want these used clock parts? Like, they're not good. But what I was trying to do was collect or find as many gears that I could so that I could make the right gear ratio to make my hour hand and minute hand move uh, exactly so that it showed correct time. So after a while, I then thought, I like the clock, but I want to make something with lights. I want to have something that doesn't have any hands uh, but just lights. So then I thought about it more, and I then thought, like, if it's got 60 lights on it, nobody's going to want to count the lights. Nobody's going to want to count to 60. So how do I minimize the number of markers needed for hours and minutes? I took out a clock. I then realized I need 12 hours. And then for minutes, how do I get to 60? I started to think about different multiples of 60, 2 times 30, uh, 3 times 20, 4 times 15. But then after looking at a clock, I realized that on a clock, the hour markers, which are you know, numbered 1, 2, you know, and on, that those also represent 5-minute increments. And I realized that all I needed was 11 5-minute increments. And then what really counted, or what really took up lots of the markers, were the 1, 2, 3, 4, or 6, 7, 8, 9, in between the 5 minutes. And so if I could minimize that, then I could make a clock with the uh, minimum number of indicators. So this is what I came up with here. Well, it's not on, but. So this is my clock. It looks better when there's no light, but essentially it's a linear type of clock. It's got 12 hours, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 11 five minute increments, which in this case are colored white. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and then four ones. One, two, three, and four. So the time that this is showing now, you count the number of markers that are actually turned on. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the, five, the minutes, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 51, so it's 751 right now. So I call this mode, this is, I call this like a cumulative mode. Another mode that I have is one that only shows what's needed. So it's actually, it's the position of the indicator. So again, we have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 51, 52, so 752. Uh, so now, I guess just to make sure you guys have it, I'll change the time and let you guys uh, count time with me if you would like. I'm just gonna. We'll make it easy. There we go. So you guys want to count along with me? We'll start off with the hours, starting from the bottom. One. Nine. Okay, and now the minutes. Five. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. So on this, it's nine, seventeen. A shortcut that I use uh, that I eventually figured out was that I use the two hour, the five hour, the eight hour, and the 11 hour as a reference point. Kind of like on the regular clock, you use the three, six, nine as a reference point. So just looking at this, I know this is eight, so I know that's nine. Uh, in between the two and the five is a 15. In between the five and the eight is a 30. In between the eight and the 11 is a 45. So again, I know that's eight, so that's nine. In between these two is a 15, 16, 17. So my, it took, I've been working on, well, the first clock I worked on, that was for four years. This one I've been working on for, for nine years, but 
Uh, I've worked on this for a long time, and yes, it always hasn't been so great for dating life, but uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm happy that I was able to combine a couple of my passions, art, clocks, and I was able to make something that, uh, that I see as a type of functional art. And you know, I, my hope is for you guys to follow your passions also and hopefully build something that you're happy about too. Thank you.